Islamic Republic amputates four fingers of accused Iranian thief. In a shocking act of punitive justice, the Islamic Republic of Iran has carried out the amputation of four fingers from a prisoner accused of stealing sheep, a punishment that underscores the severe and controversial nature of Iran's judicial practices. The prisoner, identified as Yusuf T, was accused of taking five sheep from five sheep from a farm owned by a member of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, or IRGC, a charge he denied throughout his 13-month detention. The execution of the sentence, described by Mahmoud Amiri uh, Mogadam of Iran Human Rights Organization, show, as showing, quote, the utmost cruelty and immorality of the system, has drawn international condemnation. This act, highlighted against the backdrop of allegations of widespread corruption within the regime, starkly illustrates the harshness of the judicial measures enforced in Iran, sparking outrage and calling for accountability from the highest levels of the Iranian judiciary and government officials involved in such practices. So this is exactly... Um, well, not a surprise for people who follow this channel. We talk about when people are um, sentenced to these punishments before. We've talked about when these punishments are carried out today. There is one Iranian human rights organization that has tracked at least, I believe it was 356 amputations from the founding of the Islamic Republic in Iran. And that's only the ones that they know about. They believe that the number of actual amputations carried out in Iran since 1979 is um, is much higher. And um, this, this man had four of his fingers amputated. And uh, these are supposedly supposed to happen in a quote-unquote medical setting. There's been instances where men have almost died afterwards because of the infections that have happened because of these amputations. And the most ridiculous, one of the most ridiculous parts of this that I have ever heard of is I had, at least for other amputations that have happened, I don't know if this happens for all of them, but there have been instances where they say to the men, oh, hey, if you pay us money, if you pay us a giant fine, we will actually keep your fingers and then reattach your fingers after we amputate them if you can pay for it. Because basically they still need to um, execute the sentence. But if you pay us a giant sum of money, we'll actually reattach your fingers. So you can like move, go on with your life. But oh, I'm sorry, this man was accused of petty theft. And that's why he's getting his fingers chopped off in the first place. It's absolutely medieval. Um, Armin, please give me your reaction. And have you been hearing anything about this recent sentence in, in the Persian sphere? No, this is, I'm hearing it from you, one. Uh, <clears throat> so three points. One, only poor people get their fingers chopped off. Uh, Iran is filled with corruption. And I'm talking corruption on levels that you can't even imagine. Uh, with, we're talking huge sums of money being stolen by very, very rich people. To the tune none of, of them get billions, billions of dollars. Yeah, I mean, when, she, when we're saying billions here, for example, billions of dollars here, like, for example, in tea corruption, lawmakers, like, this is the tea scandal. I don't know if you saw this. The 2023 no. Iranian tea smuggling scandal, right? So... The Debsh Tea Company set a new financial record for, for a corruption case in Iran by diverting over $3.3 billion. This is U.S. dollars, okay? From the government subsidized foreign currency for importing tea and equipment for a tea sector. So this is like really rich people stealing a crap ton of money and none of them get punished. You know, they don't get punished at all. But if you're poor, if you steal sheep, if you steal sheep, like imagine stealing sheep. These are poor people. These are the, the, the kind of people who the government and the society has failed them. These are people who are just trying to survive, right? These are not like evil people that are stealing billions of people from billions of dollars from people from society, right? 
These are just people like I need to feed my freaking kids. And you get your you get your fingers chopped up. So it's it, they only come after the weak and the poor. They don't go when it comes to implementing these laws, they don't go after rich people. Um and also imagine like you making the problem worse. Like the people who are stealing are people who need help and support because they're not they're not part of society. They have been left behind. Okay, and usually in advanced c countries, when somebody is stealing like this, because the society has failed them, they find a way to, you know, they first of all they punish them as a deterring factor, but they also find a way to bring them into society to make to try to involve them in economic activity so that they don't have to steal the next time. They while they're in prison, they give them the skills and the tools to become economically active. So that they could provide for themselves and their family without having to without having to steal. But even if you can't do that, even if you're not an advanced country that is not capable of doing that, why would you take away their means of production and work? Like if you cut their hand, like this is a person that could not provide, and now they can never provide because you cut their fingers, their tools for that's how they could have made income. That's the how they could have like they could they weren't producing before they weren't bringing money for their family and now they can never do that because they don't have any fingers anymore. Like at least if you can't be like as progressive as some advanced countries, why are you why are you making it? Why are you going the other way around? Yeah, exactly. The, I don't know. It's just so backwards. It's so Wait, obviously actually backwards. Yeah, it's medieval. It's absolutely medieval. This is literally a medieval form of torture and punishment. And this is why I try to communicate with people that the Islamic Republic of Iran is a abnormal state. They are an abnormal state. And this is who we're dealing with when we naively try to negotiate with these fucking psychos. Um, and Suresh is bringing up a good point, saying Iran, Iran's army abuses Kurds like nothing. Exactly. A lot of these punishments... I don't know about the corporal punishments in general, but executions in particular disproportionately affect Kurds and Baluchis. Like it's horrendous how disproportionate it is. But and these are regions that are oftentimes deliberately left in like a state of like. But it's not because they're it's not it's not because they're Kurd or Baluch. It's because they're poor. You know the Islamic regime of Iran. They they just go after the weak. Whoever has a voice, it's harder for them to go after. It's because of poverty. It's not because of ethnicity. Yeah, but if the state has continuously over a series of decades failed to or, or purposefully neglected entire areas that contain different minorities, yeah. and then yeah. those people then go do certain crimes because they are in a state of neglect and poverty, is it yeah. really that much of a reach to be like, I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah, I mean, the government has always favors centralized, richer places than, you know, other areas that are border, um, you know, closer to the borders. But that's a different topic. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, but D problem. actually um, provided mm -hmm. a um, a great video in mm -hmm. in the um, this one. Yes. You are going to have to read aloud some of the translations if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Hold on. Should we just watch the video like this? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have to watch the whole thing, but at least the beginning because it's really powerful. Thank you, D, for providing this. Oh, okay, so let's see. So this is the text exchange. It says breaking. Hand amputation sentence carried out in Iran. And somebody says, lies in response. And then the response is, they don't really give out hand amputation sentences. Don't fall for people spreading rumors. Don't be silly. Most of the time, they don't carry these things out. Absurd. Nonsense. Come on now, there's no such sentence, uh, sentence in Iran. Okay. 
تكي هي So he's saying they took us out of the out of solitary confinement handcuffed from there from there they took us to the prison yard where they had gathered all the prisoners so they could watch I was looking from under the blindfold and I saw a bloody machine wow. nothing there was no sanitation it was a steel cutter the warden as if they were slaughtering an animal said it's nothing it's just cutting off four fingers what is that So this guy's name is Mohsen Sabzichi from Iraq. He was charged with theft and his sentence was hand amputation. This was in 2011. And, says, and, they, and then they pushed the knob okay they put my hand under the machine and they, they pushed the knob as i was watching my fingers fell to the floor and they were moving anyway they cut they cut off they cut my fingers off bandaged my hand and put me in the ambulance and said so, all right what kind of a punishment is this Come on, man. It's not the first time for thieves like this. They, they've got to have a few dozen uh, under their belt. What? There were many prisoners who didn't get hand amputations. Though they, they dropped hundreds of times. For me, I got an amputation sentence my first time. Oh, so... so So the question was like these people must be serial thieves like they must have been stealing stealing a lot only after stealing a lot of money that's uh, many times that's that's the only time when they get ham, hand amputation so this guy is saying like no the very first time I stole something they cut my hand, fingers this is why I'm upset and complaining Why have they sentenced me to hand amputation even though it was my first time? <clears throat> If someone uh, changes his ways after this, how is he supposed to make a living? Oh yeah, so like if somebody decides like, yeah, okay, it was not a good thing that I stole, but now they can't even make a living anymore because they don't have fingers. Have they thought of this though? No. Like, or like, have they thought this through? And now he's saying, I can't even eat correctly. Uh, even eating is difficult. I can't hold utensils. I can't do anything. My life is very hard. It's hell. I can't button my own shirt. I can't tie my I can't tie my own shoes. Somebody has to help me with it. So this guy is saying, as a lawyer, I can tell you Iran's Islamic criminal code really does include this punishment, and it is indeed carried out more or less. This is it happens a lot. There are 11 people in the prison right now who have been sentenced to hand amputation. The sentence has not been carried out yet. But they're carried out for three of us. One guy got it uh, for his hand and foot. What? The other one is me, then Hussein. 
Oh, so there's now 11 other people who the judge has sentenced to hand amputation, but they're not yet carried out. It's not clear. It might get carried out tomorrow in two or maybe five years. I know that Islam talks about hand amputation. Yeah, guys, this is actually in the Quran. It's not even it's not even hadith. It's in the Quran itself. But it doesn't necessarily have to be carried out. Is it reasonable, really? Instead of solving the problem, they're just um, what papering, papering it over, papering like they're just like over. blowing past it, covering it up. Mm. My life fell apart because of hand I turned to my parents' home. I don't usually go out of the house because of what, what people say. We live in a very small and closed environment. And everybody has something to say. So I hide my hand. I put it in my pocket. Or cover with my with a bandage. All right, I made a mistake, but I shouldn't be humiliated this much. God, I never have, never have I appreciated my fingers in my life so much as much as right now. Do you know how many things? Like you know how fucked up our life would be if we just simply didn't have four fingers like there's so many things that we do that we couldn't do if we just didn't have four fingers such a major punishment for just a small crime it's insane yeah so thank you d for finding that video because i actually hadn't seen a video from um a victim of this before and I think that's really yeah. powerful. So you can like see the consequence and what it actually means in someone's life. Because I've seen Islamic scholars, including American Islamic scholars, argue that these corporal punishments are more humane because they let someone just experience the, the, the punishment and then go back into life instead of like a Western model where you go to jail and are outside of civilian life for years and then you have the sentence of being a convict and then that carries you for the rest of your life and you're away from your children for years and then you have like an ex-convict record and how that like you know is it, it it impacts you economically blah 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 and I'm like you think this is less humiliating <laughs> like it's absurd um, we got a bunch of super chats, so thank you, everyone. Charles gave 50 Danish kronas. This thank you, saying, Hey, Susie, some of us Danes actually like to dress up as Vikings and have mass fencing matches, Viking markets, and whatnot. Yeah. Google Viking Trough. I don't know how to pronounce anything in Danish. Okay, you know, to be fair, that actually does sound fun. That sounds <laughs> That sounds more fun. To me, that's a little bit... It's it's a little bit less cringe because you're not like pretending to be like straight up fantasy. For example, like the idea of going to like Scottish right. Highland games where they like do full traditional Scottish outfits and they do the the traditional games where you like throw entire tree trunks. I'm like, hell yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> what about what about a Renaissance fair? You're against that? I'm not. I mean, I'm not against it. Like, I'm not like going to prescribe anyone from so doing judgmental. it. So judgmental. So Do I think it's a little? Yeah, I still judge uh, the Renaissance Fair a little bit. I'm gonna be fully oh honest. God. I'm gonna be <laughs> fully honest. But that's me personally. That's me personally, and that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. You can go live your life, do your thing. Abhishek gave us uh, forty rupees of a super sticker. Thank you. And Thank you. LeBronzo gave us six euros. Thank you. Saying not saying it's comparable to Iran, but in what light would you compare the U.S. prison industrial complex? I mean, of course, it's not comparable to Iran. What the hell? Um, what well, he, well, there's a lot of problems. Yes, yes. In there's what light would you compare the U.S. 
I think it's much in, more inferior to what the model that we have in Scandinavian countries, right? So I like how yeah, but the I Scandinavian like countries are having to change their models right now because they cannot deal with the amount of crime that they are experiencing. Like how people praise yeah. Sweden so much. Sweden is having to overhaul its criminal justice system because they cannot deal with the level of criminality they're experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. So this okay. lovely, perfect little utopian model that you used to love because violence and, and extreme criminality used to be so rare in Sweden now has to be radically overhauled. It's disappearing. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration. But... But that's a conversation people well, aren't ready for yet. So here's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that the Islamic model is horrible. I don't know. I don't have enough ex knowledge to be able to judge other countries' models. Yeah, yeah I am very... I don't like the... I think the privatization of um, mm -hmm. the no U.S. Idea. prison industrial uh, complex is a giant part of the problem. There are some yes. areas of industry where I really love privatization. I don't think, uh, yeah, criminal justice and rehabilitation is a, an appropriate one. Yeah. Um, okay, we got a super chat from GJ saying Westerners visiting central squares and biggest Saudi cities, cities notice thin paving gutters into sewage systems thinking rain, but it's chopped blood runoffs. I think this is a little bit of a overgeneralization. Do you think every gutter in the Saudi major cities is like for blood? I don't know. And just as a side note, there's this person that has been freaking out in the live chat about me. Hashtag Susanna lies, AR dies. Like they are having a mm. full blown panic looking in the mirror conversation with themselves <laughs> about me. And it's been so funny to watch. Like this person is, yeah, like is without lies, Islam dies, Susanna lies for AR today. Like <laughs> the entire stream, this man has been like ripping out his own hair. <laughs> Insanity. <laughs> so funny i'm like i haven't Clearly. even acknowledged you um, once and i think he's pissed because a while ago i was making jokes about how the people that freak out about love jihad are like oftentimes the subtext of what they're saying is like because i was making a joke about and a lot of people didn't understand was when there are hindu nationalists that are constantly freaking out about this like insane intense sexual magnetism of muslim men and they're like their charm and they're like sensuality like how in there was one hindu nationalist woman who literally said like we should stop calling it love jihad it's sex jihad blah 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 i'm like are you not shitting on the romantic power sexual magnetism of hindu men like that's the subtext yeah. is that <laughs> like Muscle men are so much more attractive and charismatic. Like, and so I was just making a joke that they're actually shitting on themselves when they're so obsessed with the charisma of muscle men. <laughs> that that idea is like that that juxtaposition is just really funny to me. <laughs> oh my god. Like they're oh, stealing all our women because they're just so sensual. Like, hmm. <laughs> um. Uh. Anyways, we have a few more super chats. Erkin uh gave another super chat saying private prison prisons are actually the minority of prisons in America, but the problem is is that it it can easily create an incentive to. In, in, in prison more people that's part of the issue um and gj gave a super chat saying consider the enormous cost of imprisoning people versus just cutting a finger off a major factor in a country like iran suffering financial un sanctions 
Actually, the cost of cutting someone's finger off is more because now they're not a productive member of society and now they're not going to be able to earn and that's and they're not going to pay taxes. You know, the earning money that they would. So I think the costing, yeah. Also, the idea of blaming this on sanctions is insane to me. They would be doing this without the sanctions. Yeah. Iran would be impoverished. They would be impoverished even without the sanctions because of the sheer amount of uh, corruption and how inefficient their economy is because of their weird, Mm. um, like, semi-socialist policies and then also how much monopoly the IRGC has over the entire economy like Mm. there's so much other stuff (laughs) to make the economy crap um I mean Armin do you think I'm off base saying that no I think the economy would suffer with that sanction it would suffer less but it would suffer still a lot because they just believe in this um isolationist resisting and also command um, economics that has obviously failed everywhere else in the world. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube blasphemous art ever? We do! And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.